because it reminded me a little bit of what summer feels like at home and when they like understand the rules in office. And also I'm a sociology major. And yeah, this is called Summer Young Children at Home. I stand hat in hand, face to the with the sky, as the thunderhead rolls over the foothills. I'm smaller than they are, but I ask only now, as their shadows lengthen above me and the wind keeps playing with his own. The green stay to red, stay to brown, stay to blacks. The trees paint colors in the wind. I breathe in the smell of dust, the smell of life, and the first drops splash to the earth, and I am momentarily, entirely alive. I'm Amelie Staples. I'm an anthropology major. And uh, I picked this work because it was one of the only land ones that has um, like other things in it other than like mountains and you know grass. So it's called A Sketch for Campo Santo. A weathered, honest man works in the sun, blazing, to burn his hair ruddy as the shrubs underfoot and lacquer his eyes the same blue as the shadow on the distant hills. Shirt made from the same from the sun-bleached flowers of old wreaths, hanging heavy with a reverence of outliving. Each day he pushes the stones, impossibly slow. Every day his hands meet the warm white crosses, and even warmer splintered crosses, on their ivory and dust foundations, cradles of people who came before him, searching for a home. He straightens the monuments inch by inch, a gardener, a futile calloused hope written into his hands that are cultivating the the forest of silent and shaped saplings alongside their wooden nailed siblings, crucifixes with the bodies already in the fine hard packed soil below. He takes a break, wipes the salt and silt from his brow. His sleeve comes away stained the color of the arid air, smelling of dry tinder twigs and solace breezed over the hills. He straightens the graves so his own will be straight. The autumn comes late when the crosses are crooked again and the man lies under a distant stoic marker that in shadow is the same color of his eyes turned to heaven in a prayer. Hi, I'm Abby Peo. I'm a psychology major and I chose this painting because when I saw it I thought um, I would like to be buried somewhere like here, not um, somewhere crowded but peaceful. So, my poem is called A Holy Field. <laughs> Who wants to be buried at Westminster Abbey? Dickens, Darwin, Newton, already immortal in words, theories, formulas, can't rest with thousands of visitors a day. I chose here. Stained glass is too pretentious for me. I like my crooked cross, my few neighbors. Visitors are scarce except the old woman who gives wreaths. No gawking, just stillness. She ponders about me. I wonder about her. She will die and forget, but I never feel fear. Distant mountains, rusted sand, warm brush, the occasional bird. 
holy life will always remember me. Hi, um, my name is Maya Kreiser. Um, my major is psychology, but I'm also doing neuroscience. Um, and the reason I chose this painting was because I'm also a member of the astronomy club and I love the stars. Um, I was astrophysics before I switched my major um, and um, that deep love of the stars. I'm gonna give you a quick little astronomy lesson. The summer triangle, which I reference in my poem, is actually a constellation. Um, it's made up of three stars to make one star system. In the stars, um, the constellations are the Holy Cross, the Swan, and yeah, I'm just gonna start now. <laughs> um, <clears throat> As the swan extends her great wings over the plains, a man can but sit in his own awe. He may recognize his own mortality, a finite existence within a finite body, to return to dust within a turn of the earth. When the meadow of celestial bodies shrouds the night sky, the human spirit will long for the stars. He wishes to hold the beginning of life in his hand, to feel the sands of creation slip through his fingers. To the man, the stars are evidence of the omniscient cultivating hand. They are remnants of the gateway between worlds. They are testimony of the first act of entropy. They were not created to belong to the angels, nor they to man. But rather, the man is made to love the swan well, or as much as vision might allow. Perhaps that is why she layeth out of reach. She weareth not the garment of man, for she is a remainder of a God's dream. I chose this painting uh, because of the contextual uh, historical conflict I feel it brings up. It must have really sucked to be a man during the Great Depression. Uh, to have that drive to want to provide uh, do something constructive in society, but society is just not a productive, constructive place at the moment. And where do you go from there? Um, my poem is titled, The Road to Somewhere. Behind me is one future, my birthplace, my bed, but I haven't glanced back for some time, so it may have already gone, caught up by the wind and swept to California. Taking the next step would be a regression. Oh, I still don't know what lies in the West. My shoes want out. I am chased by shame and dishonor, disappointment and failure, and empty bellies. I think at night of empty grasping, grasping hands, small hands. Before me is a maybe that might lead to a warm bed. Alicia, I am a public relations major and this is actually my last semester so I chose this painting because when I saw it I had kind of an emotional reaction I felt a little bit like this man having climbed up so much and not really sure where to go next so this poem is called second semester senior seeks a home breathe in deep rest for a moment against a worn fence keeping me in, keeping me out. I have come all this way, climbing over these hills, the shadows growing deeper. I no longer remember why I am walking. If I keep moving, it does not matter what I carry or where I wander. Breathe out long, and the wind moves soft. I follow the lines of the grass, running from the shadows, my shoulders hunch, struggling to remember for what purpose I set out to be educated by the trees to be schooled at the knees of a mountain, to learn from the annals of its history, and yet I resist the urge to walk where others lead. Breathe in deep, the air is salty. Breathe out long, the way has taught me I belong as a stranger. And though I wandered up this hill in the hope the top would make the way clear, I know now how to roam. And perhaps tomorrow, with no end looming near, I will know which way is home. I wrote a horse named Wounded Knee, drove a jalapeno named Joe. 
I had a ticket to destiny on this old transcontinental road. I only jumped ship once or twice, but left my name on the manifest of the U.S. Maine and the Merrimack, where I did my very best. The island of tears, the trail of tears, it's all the same to me. What I often saw in my traveling years was much more than eyes could see. The Black Hills of Dakota, the mighty Serpent Mound, a shirtwaist factory in a quota, gray Gatsby sitting drowned. The land is fraught with trees and streams and endless maps to roam. Now powdered white with epiphanies, it seems all was once a home. I loved a woman named Mary Fisher, a demand named Geronimo, broke bread and chains with exodusters and refugees from Mexico. As years grew thin, I painted canvas more colorfully than before, a race of races, not of bandits, that take and still want more. We planted ourselves, a sod house garden, ordered parts on a telegraph, and grew with care, attempts to pardon, after a life of aftermaths. Each weed was pulled from stubborn roots, each seed grown from desire. But by and by, they'll bear the fruits as the tyrants tire and tire. I know this land, like an upturned hand, can read it like its home. And as it's gathered in outstretched hands, it all just wants a home. I rode a horse named Wounded Knee down a lonely westward road into the present of shadows flee and burdening their load. Such differences in landscapes lost, so many men unknown, a nation fraught to pay the cost, is all at once a home. The title is Roadsided. The sun has long since set, Still my feet tread on, the trail bends through, brush and rock and sorrow and pain. Still, I cannot see where it does end. The sky's blue skin looks rough and worn. Still it spreads and never ends. An empty place, not new, not old. Still it calls and hopes to be. I see a fire there that makes the darkness darker. Still it burns, though I have no light. I took a break, no longer will my journey be. Still the, the night remains untroubled by my sight. <laughs>